Robert Tom for Classic Rock 96.7, The Eagle. It's Double T and special guest hanging out in the studio with me, Mayor Tom McNamara. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks it's great so much to for see having you. me. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Now, first of all, before we get into the, the meat of the conversation here, how's things going in the world of Rockford and being the mayor? I think things are going great. We, uh, we have a lot of opportunities ahead of us, and I think we're doing some wonderful things when it comes to public safety. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just found out that... Uh, property car- crime has uh, reduced by 8%, violent crime by 5%. I think we're doing some wonderful things in our neighborhoods, increasing the amount of money that we're putting into neighborhood streets to help increase uh, property values. Uh, so we're, we've got a lot going on, and uh, we're really excited. You know, and before we get into this, since you brought it up, you know, the, the numbers came back, and yeah. we had some better numbers yep. in the world of crime. But then how frustrating does it get where, you know, you guys have been working hard, and, and, I, and I've met the chief and the sheriff, and I know they, they're great guys, and, and, and they've been working hard, too. And so... The numbers come back, and then all of a sudden, you know, something happens. Because things are going to happen. We live in a city, and then people are like, oh, they're lying about those numbers. They fluff the numbers, you know. Okay, a couple of things. One, uh, <laughs> give me some credit. If I was going to fluff the numbers, you, would you think I'd say the violent crime's down 5%? No, I'd say it's down 55%. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, no, uh, I think that, uh, you know, you're going to hear that. Some people just don't want facts. Right. Um, and we keep very detailed uh, uh, stats. Uh, we keep them on our website. On uh, Every three days it's updated. We update it every month with our rock stat. Uh, and now, just coming up uh, this Friday, we'll do a, a complete rock stat for the entire past year. So uh, we keep tremendous stats. Uh, I have all the faith uh, that I need to have in uh, Chief O'Shea and, more importantly, probably all the officers that are out there doing really tremendous work. It's been really humbling to see that from the level I get to see it at. Um, and I wish uh, more citizens uh, had the idea that and kind of the eyesight that I get to see uh, our police officers do this work. It really, truly is humbling and inspiring to see the work right. that they put in. All of our 911, uh, uh, all of our emergency response uh, officers just do a tremendous job. All right, so let's talk about this. Uh, the the big topic of discussion for the next election, which is coming up, we were just talking about, what, 40 days or about something? About 40 days. About 40 days, home rule. Now, originally, I thought, you know, it was something you did in school, but that's home room. So yeah. I, that's where I, I got in trouble. Yeah, it's, I was never on time for home room. Right. I always got tardies. Well, we started to. Right? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about this 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 home rule thing. Give For, for like, the average citizen that might not know exactly Exactly what it is. Yep. Kind of give a, a breakdown of what home rule really is. All right. So I'll talk to you about it in two points. Okay. One is in 1970, the Illinois state legislature said we need to add an amendment uh, and a provision to our constitution. And they did this because they understood they could not broadly legislate for every single municipality. You have some that are 35,000 population. Right. Yeah. Then you have some that are 2.7 million. You have some that are rural settings. You have some that are urban settings. So they understood that they couldn't legislate for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they couldn't do so so that uh, local municipalities didn't have the flexibility and the, con- and the control to adapt to local challenges and opportunities. Okay. So at its basic core... If you are a non-home rule community, if you're a non-home rule community, you can only do those things that our Illinois state legislature allows you to do. Okay. If you are a home rule community, you can do nearly anything that you want to do, except for those things that the Illinois state legislature explicitly says you cannot do. Okay. So with home rule, you get much broader uh, authority, much more responsibility, uh, and much more control over what's happening here in your own hometown. All right. Do you have an example of something like that that we could we could talk about, you know, where uh, a city in Illinois used home rule home rule um, to make something better in their town? Yeah. A number of cities have instituted what they call a local preference ordinance. OK. OK. So right now, the city of Rockford, every time we go out to bid, we have to take the lowest bid. And okay. we do that to protect our tax dollars, uh, our citizens' tax dollars, which right. is a good thing. Right? right, right. So local preference says this, that you can, uh, let's say I'm going out to bid and I'm a company from Indiana. You're going out to bid and you're a company from Rockford for an HVAC million-dollar contract. Okay. Right? Let's say I come in 2% lower than you do. Okay. I now have to, as city of Rockford, have to give the contract to the company from indiana okay 
Which makes sense. You because they're money. the lowest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With a local preference ordinance, all that simply does is say, hey, to the local company, if you're within 5% of the lowest bid, and that lowest bid is from out of town, you have the opportunity to meet or beat that lowest bid. Okay. So, so it gives the, the home guy a little bit of, of an does. advantage there. So okay. what I argue is it gives you the best of both worlds. You get the lowest rate, right? Mm-hmm. And you start using our tax dollars to invest in our companies that invest in our community and that employ our people. Okay. Think about this. In 2017, we spent almost $5 million on companies who don't live in, that don't have headquarters in Rockford, not even in our region, literally outside of our state. Right. I want to keep those dollars here working for us, working for our citizens, and employing our people. I think that's important to me. I'm sick and tired of seeing my tax dollars go to companies out of the state. You know, and, and I have been around town and, and see a project going on and <coughs> see, you know, on the side of the trucks or whatever f- from a different state, a different mm-hmm. city. And, and I often wondered why that was that way. Yeah. It's because we have no choice right here because the state legislature says uh, municipalities have to take the lowest bid. And I don't blame them because that's good in principle. But if we have companies here that can do it, why not keep the money here? Right. Uh, there's a whole host of things that we can do. Uh, take property taxes. Mm-hmm. I'm sick and tired of having the highest property taxes in the state. Yeah, I, I agree but with you there. We are yeah. working to reduce that property tax levy. It is proven that home rule communities can actually reduce their reliance on property taxes. They do that by shifting the responsibility onto other players. Number one, uh, one thing I've stated very publicly that I want to do, I want to increase the hotel motel tax by 1%. We as a community have invested in all these uh, sports complexes, the sports factory, the soccer fields, the basketball courts. We've done this to attract tens of thousands of people, and it's working. Right. I mean, I was at a, a, a... ultimate frisbee tournament right. out at the sports it was store awesome. yeah it was but, really cool so these folks are staying at our hotels using our roads using our services uh, some are using our emergency response services let's add one percent to their hotel charge which most people don't say oh i'm not going to go to this city because it's a half percent higher than the next city right they don't look you if just you're order going, your yeah room. if you're going there you're going, you're going there. there there's nothing you can do about it my belief is let's use that money to help offset the burden that me and you pay as rockford citizens okay i honestly that it boils down to a couple of things one is who do you want to control your destiny The Illinois state legislature that, to me, has proven to be one of the most dysfunctional bodies uh, in America. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Illinois state legislature, when they passed their budget uh, last year, they increased all of our income taxes by 60%. Right. That's true. They didn't ask us to vote on that, by the way. (laughs) They also, your income tax goes into a pool of money called the local government distributive fund, and that is then distributed to local governments to pay for police, fire, and public works. So they have 60% more money. And they gave us back 10% less money, which added almost $3 million to our deficit, which means we, as Rockfordians, A, we're paying the state more, and Mm -hmm. B, now we have to make up the money to pay for the services here, because I don't think anyone uh, with the snow falling outside wants less uh, plow drivers. No, not at all. I don't think anyone with uh, (laughs) us being on a five-year high of vacant buildings uh, being lit on fire uh, want less firemen and women. And I don't think anyone would say, hey... We have this public safety thing figured out. We need less officers. So my thing is, let's start attracting money from the outside uh, to help reduce our obligation. So it it comes down to, do you want the Illinois General Assembly, who only 3% of those folks represent the city of Rockford? Or do you want a city council that 100% of them live here, go to your churches, live in your neighborhoods, meet you at your restaurants, will come to your local radio station, and all of us pay any taxes and fees that we institute. I believe we need more local control. Rockford Mayor Tom McNamara hanging out with me, and and we had talked about Steve Miller last time, but you have a different taste of music these days. Oh, yeah. With a 21-month-old, it's all about uh, (laughs) Moana and uh, the movie Sane. Um, So that's all I've been listening to. I've probably seen the movie Moana maybe 380 times in the last, uh, (laughs) probably in the last month. Well, you've made up for me because I haven't seen it yet. So oh, <laughs> it's one of the better kid movies. But wow! So we're we're talking home rule. The the, the uh, elections coming up in about forty days. So here's the the thing that that I want to ask you about, and I've been thinking about with this is there's a word called trust, 
And and it's got to be hard because no matter what you do, and I've you know, met you several times, we get along, I, I like you, but the sins of people before mm-hmm. affect what happens now. So there's this thing with trusts and the government, and there's people out there that are like, oh, no, no, anything you want to try to do is is wrong. So how do you get through the trust issue with stuff like this when you're trying to to make a change when things have been a certain way for a long time okay so i think you hit the nail on the head when you get down to it a huge piece of the home rule effort is about trust Mm -hmm. so uh to vote no on home rule means that you trust illinois state legislature more than you trust people who live in your own community okay to me that's a really sad statement uh, because I don't think you've ever had Mike Madigan, John Cullerton, or Bruce Rauner in this studio. Right. And right now, you can have more access uh, to your local uh, elected leaders. You actually have the ability to vote for them, which you don't for Mike Madigan or John Cullerton. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. The second thing is, I think it's a real valid concern. So what we have done, uh, which no other community in the state of Illinois has done, is has put in provisions to help alleviate some of those real concerns. Okay. So some of those provisions uh, would be, number one, we stated that we will limit the amount of property taxes we can increase to the same level as any non-home rule community. We did that because we don't want to increase property taxes because we all live here. That's why we actually (laughs) reduced our levy by 400,000 this year. Okay. Number two, we said if we were ever to consider property tax or a sales tax increase, we would publicize it we would provide 15 days notice and hold a public hearing. How fun would a public hearing be about increasing property? Oh taxes? gosh, I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> and instead of getting a simple majority at right. council, we would need a super majority. Okay, okay. now what's a super majority? Super majority, so right now we need a simple majority. You just need the majority of the council to vote for it. Super majority means that we need 10 out of 14 aldermen. So nearly all the aldermen to mm-hmm. approve it. Okay. So we've increased the number of aldermen that you need to vote any of those taxes through. Uh, we've also limited our debt. Some people are concerned that we're just going to spend like crazy and increase our debt. We've actually limited our debt to 20% less than what the state allows non-home rule communities. Again, we live here. We don't want to go into debt. We don't want to increase property taxes. And the last thing that no one else has done, I'm proposing that you actually have the ability to recall me. If I don't do what I'm gonna, what I say I'm going to do, mm-hmm. you now will have the ability to recall me. Okay. There's one other mayor in Illinois state's history that has given citizens that much authority, that many checks and balances that I am proposing on myself. I believe if I'm asking for more responsibility and authority, I need to give that back to the citizens as well. And so I, I think the checks and balances are in place. I think the self-limiting and guardrail ordinances that we've put in place are not in place in other communities. So, yes, I think there are uh, guardrails in place so that people, even if they're a little bit leery, uh, they can trust that these guardrails are in place and that we will live by them. Otherwise, you can simply recall us. Get you out of there. See you later. There you go. (laughs) Robert Mayor Tom McNamara is in the studio with me. So, we get the chance to vote. Yep. for our elected officials. How can we get people more involved? Because everybody wants to go out and vote for president. Yep. But we have less of control of that than we do of the local people. So how do we get people more involved and more into voting for their local people? Yeah, and I think it even goes beyond just voting. Just getting them more engaged in what's going on on a day-to-day basis. There's a uh, Many will argue that what happens at the local level has a far greater impact on you than what happens at the national level. Oh, yeah, definitely. So what we are doing, uh, and what I did quite honestly during my mayoral race, is uh, we have 31 events from this morning to the election. So there's 40 days between now and the election. So you have an opportunity to come and listen to anything that I want to say about home rule and ask me any direct question. Okay. Which, by the way, you can't do to Madigan, Cullerton, or Browner. (laughs) Uh, But I get that opportunity. And the reason we're doing it is to make sure, number one, I want people to be informed. 
Number two, I want them to vote. If they're voting for it or against it, I just want them to have an informed vote and that they actually use their voice. We in this community need to go in on March 20th with some conviction that we deserve to have uh, control over our own destiny. That's why I'm supporting uh, the Home Rule Initiative. Why would we give power and control to a Springfield legislation that has proven dysfunctional? Why not keep it here where we can hold our elected officials accountable when we can't hold uh, 97 percent of the state legislature accountable? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 all very good points. Do you have anything planned? So if it gets past the home rule, do you have things planned? You said, OK, well, if we get home rule, this is where we're going to start to kind of give people a game plan. Absolutely. So, uh, number one, uh, we will uh, create a community land bank that will help address a blight in foreclosed homes that's in all of our neighborhoods. Blight and foreclosed homes are reducing our property values by 6.1% to 9.2% if you're in that same neighborhood. Okay. So we're going to address the blight and uh, foreclosed homes in all of our neighborhoods. Number two, we are going to put in place a local preference ordinance to keep our tax dollars right here investing in our companies, employing our people. The, the three areas that I'm going to increase revenue is, number one, to the private corporations who own senior citizen homes. They're calling our 911 dispatch to have our firemen and women go out and lift and assist a senior who has fallen. I don't mind doing it, but our uh, really bright state legislature uh, said that we can charge a maximum fee of zero. Okay. So these private corporations are shifting their liability and workers' compensation costs onto us, the property tax owners. Number uh, the. Other two that I'll do is, one, I'll increase a hotel motel tax so Mm -hmm. we can attract more revenue from outside. And the last one is I want to increase the cost for gaming machines. Okay. Right now, the state legislature says we can charge the maximum amount of $25 per gaming machine for an annual license fee. Wow. Comparable community. Comparable communities charge between two hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars. We got a few of those too around. We I've have seen the, them. either the most or second most in the entire state, and we are charging the least amount of money that we possibly can. If we're home rule, we can charge more money, and I don't want to charge wh- too crazy amount because we want those businesses to still be in business, right? right? So you got to be smart about it, but. Between 250 and $500 is what all of our comparable communities are going to do, and that will not run any small business out of town. Rock for Mayor Tom McNamara hanging out with me. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about, get off the home rule for a second, is uh, my anniversary party's coming up one year here. Yeah. You were my first guest. I was. By the way. Um, I'd like to personally invite you to my party on February 23rd at District with Sunset Strip. If you're available, I know you got a lot going on in Mayorville, but uh, I'll definitely see if I can go. I, one year anniversary, that's a big deal. I can't believe I was your first guest. That seems like uh, just a couple months ago. I know, I know, but uh, but and I appreciate you, you coming back in. So um, we'll just kind of go over the basics of home rule before I, before I let you get out here and get out of here and go uh, attack what's going on in the city today. But uh, Home rule, the vote, it was March 20th. March is that, 20th. Is, is, the, is the election, so make sure. I mean, these are the kind of elections that people should be involved in. And if you're going to be involved, make sure you're, either way, just be educated and don't read everything on social media. Do some investigation besides, you know, your neighbor's posts. Because there could there's other info out there about it. Yes. Either way. I there's mean, that whatever info you called do. that there's that info that we often miss today called facts. Right. Um so that would be good to get out there. I, I guess I, I wanna just say, um I love this city. I think I have the best job uh in the world. Uh, I think our opportunities far outweigh our challenges. But one of the reasons I ran for mayor is to do away with the status quo. I mean, if you look at uh, the fact that we have the highest property taxes in the state, we have the highest violent crime per capita in the state, we have one of the highest concentrations of poverty, and we have this awful depiction of being a miserable community, that's not where I want to raise my kids. That's not where I want uh, your listeners to raise their kids. Uh, We can do better, uh, but we uh, we need more control here locally. Uh, we need to depend on ourselves. And I don't put uh, my faith. People are saying, well, I don't trust elected leaders. You know, one, uh, you have a far greater likelihood of trusting your local leaders as opposed to the Springfield. But 
it's not just about trust between citizens and elected leaders. It's trust in ourselves. Right. We need to go into uh, the polls on March 20th with some conviction that we, too, deserve to own uh, and control a small piece of our destiny, as opposed to giving that authority and responsibility to a group that's proven to be dysfunctional in Springfield. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's the one thing about our area, and things are getting better. And, oh, yeah. and there's some really good things going on in our community and I think one of the things we really need to do as a community is come together yep. and be one. And let's work on all this together because that's how we're going to get through this. There's, you know, we can't go to the state for money. We can't go to the, the federal for money. There's no money anywhere. So right. we have to, we're on our own to take care of ourselves, right? Yep. They're, uh, the state's no longer the dependable partner they once were. Uh, and so it's up to us uh, to chart our own course. And I think uh, I have a lot of faith in the citizens of Rockford uh, that we together, as you stated, uh, can really create wonderful opportunities so that we can move our city forward. If people want to read more about it, do you have somewhere where they can go? Do you have like a... Yeah, we definitely do. Uh, you can read more about uh, Rockford Home Rule at www.rockford. Home rule, all one word, dot com. You guys are going to be, you're going to be all over the city for the next month. So if you want to find more, if you have personal questions, they can come ask you. You're not afraid to answer any of them. My so. email's on my on the city website. It's uh, thomas.mactamara at rockfordil.gov. I personally answer all of them. Uh, if you have a question, please reach out. Just get informed and get out to vote on March 20th. Thank you so much, yeah. Mayor, for coming in today. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Congratulations on one year. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, and good luck tonight with the snow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rockford Stone for Classic Rock 96.7, The Eagle.